man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in me. Yes, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh which no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Well, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, uh -huh. which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came yes. see. Yes. Yes. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and hear this word for the good and edification of our soul. Amen. 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 And I want to talk to you this morning on the subject of a new set of eyes. Yes. Now, Jesus didn't pluck this man's eyes out and hand him a new set. No, he didn't do that. He used what the man had. Come on, now. What the man was born with and enhanced it with the power of God. Therefore, the man was able to see. And when he received his sight, he got a new set of eyes. Because see, when you get a new set of eyes, you don't see things the way that you used to see. Come on now, Christian. All right. Yes, sir. In a sense, he accepted Jesus into his life. Uh -huh. And when you accept Jesus into your life, you get a new set of eyes. Yeah, that's right. You get a new set of ears. Yes, sir. You get a new pair of you get a new set of hands. Because, see, the scripture says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, what you talking about, preacher? When you get a new set of eyes, you don't see the same things that you used to see. Or you start to see things that you didn't see before. <laughs> When you get a new set of ears, you, you don't hear the same things that you used to hear. Yeah. You don't hear them the same way. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something else. Can I tell you something else? Yeah. When you get a new set of ears, those new set of ears, they cancel out a lot of that noise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That noise that's going on, that you hear, and all that noise that's keeping you from giving God the glory. Keeping you from hearing God. Because you're hearing everything else. Yes, the pastor's been telling us something for two months now. Now, we all know that God talks to us, right? Yes, sir. Some guys speak a word to us. Yes, sir. But so does the devil. So is the devil. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why we call this a teaching church. The pastor has taught us something that I, I really didn't give a thought to in the past. But he enlightened us on the fact that the devil talks to you in your own voice. Yeah. You know, I wasn't really aware of that. But I have heard myself say a lot of things after he had enlightened me on it. I heard myself say a lot of things that I really should have been hearing myself say. So that could not have been of God. It had to be a Satan. Because it comes down to the simple fact, if it's not of God, Come on. it's of Satan. Because there's no middle ground in the kingdom of God. There is no gray area. Ask me how I know. And I'll tell you, because the Bible says you're either hot or you're cold. If you are lukewarm, that's the middle ground. If y'all know what the middle ground is, lukewarm, you know what lukewarm is. It's too cold and hot right there in the middle. He said, I will spew you out every time. So there is no middle ground. And the devil does talk to you. Yes, sir. That's why I said, oh, when you get a new set of eyes, you get a new set of ears. Yes, sir. You get a new tongue. You don't talk the same stuff that you used to talk. That's right. When you become a new creature, that inner man. That's what Paul is talking about. He's talking about that inner man. Most of us refer to as the heart. Yeah. But it's that inner man. You see, that inner man. That new creature. 
exactly what it is. Something yeah. new. Yeah. Paul says the old man passed away. Yeah. You children brought that. I'm not understanding what you're saying, Granny. I don't understand what you're saying. Well, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to illustrate it to you so that even the children can understand. Yeah. Children, I want you to think about a caterpillar. Yes. And what a caterpillar does. Yes, sir. All his life, he creeps around. And he's on the ground, or he's crawling up a tree. And all the caterpillar does is eat. And eat, and eat, and eat. And, eat. and then at some point, he stops eating. And then he finds a branch, or he finds a leaf. And then he attaches himself to that and he turns upside down. Yeah. Now just looking at a caterpillar, you don't know whether what it's going to be when it's all done. Mm -hmm. See, that's the way it is in life. You don't know what it's going to be when it's all done. Oh. You don't know where you're going to be when it's all done. Oh, right. You look at two caterpillars and you tell me, which one's going to be a butterfly and which one's going to be a moth? They go uh, caterpillars. Uh, I'll tell you what the difference between the two is. You see, a caterpillar spins, does not spin. A moth spins a cocoon. Yes. A caterpillar has a chrysalis. Yes. They enclose themselves in a chrysalis. Yes. That's how you can tell. You can tell just by looking at them. You can tell, well, oh, this is going to be a butterfly. Oh, this is going to be a moth. Come out of cocoons. No, butterflies come out of chrysalis and moths come out of cocoons. But that's how it is. Now, when that caterpillar goes into that cocoon or that chrysalis, they are developing on the inside. You can't see it. That's the same way it is in your life. When you accept Christ into your life, a lot of the development is going on the inside. Folks don't see it. That's right. You look the same to them. And then, yes, sir. at a set time, they emerge mm -hmm. from that cocoon. That's right. They emerge from that chrysalis. Mm -hmm. And they, and, and can, I, can I share something with y'all? Most folks don't know that when they, when they come out of that cocoon, you can't bother them. If you interfere in any way with them coming out of that cocoon or that cat, that chrysalis, you will kill them. That's right. And then when they come out, they're a butterfly or well, they're a moth. But guess what they're not doing anymore? They're not doing the things that they used to do. See, when you become a new creature, when you become a new man, you ain't doing the things that you used to do. Oh! They're not creeping around on the ground anymore. They, did you know a, a moth and a butterfly, they can't chew leaves no more? A butterfly don't have teeth no more. They have to suck everything. They are new creatures. They don't look the same. And guess what else they can do now? They can fly. Or you don't know the number of times when I was growing up that I wanted to be a bird. I wanted to be a bird because they could fly. I always wanted to fly. I believe that the Lord is going to give me a set of wings. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So you all understand now what I'm talking about. When you become a new creature, you don't do the things. When that caterpillar became a moth or a butterfly, they do the same things that they used to do. And that's the way it is when you become a new person. Yes. 
something with you? Mm -hmm. When you receive the calling, one of the most difficult obstacles that you are going to have is folks around you who have been around you perhaps all your life accepting your call. Oh, you know God called you, but they don't. And some of them don't believe it. I recall when the Lord called me, somebody told me, how are you going to be a preacher? You're not even qualified. And I'm going to tell you something else. You probably already know this. Little place. It's the people that's closest to you. Thank you. That try to stop you. Not all of them. But some of them. Some of them. They're close to you. Yes, sir. Not for real. But let me tell you something about that calling. When God calls you, he qualifies you. Thank you. When you get on that straight and narrow road, straight and narrow road. That's why you got to get a new set of legs. A new set of feet. Because I'm going to tell you what that narrow road is like. The word says the road is narrow. Remember, you ever been out there and saw them steel girders? Them big metal girders. You know they got a surface about the top about this thick. When I was a child like them, I would go down and I would get on, it was a, 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 a set of them girls, they were about a half a block long. Mm -hmm. And I'd get on top of them every day. And I would try to walk mm -hmm. on top of that girl. That's how the narrow road is. It's narrow for a reason. You ain't got a lot of wiggle room in that. Because the Lord wants you to stay focused, moving forward. Oh, I was at the end of my life. Yes, sir. 
demonstrated to you what being at the bottom of your life is like. Yes. I'm going to illustrate it for you so you can get a better understanding of it. How many of you have had a, a jar of mayonnaise at home? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A, a new jar of mayonnaise. You open it up. Yes. And you scoop it out for this. And you scoop it out for that. Yes. You scoop it out for this. And you scoop it out for that. That's the way you do it with your life. You open, you, you're born and you start doing this. And you start doing that. And you scoop it out this part of your life, that part of your life.
because you remember I was telling you when I was a child, I was walking that gutter. So when my friends found out that I was doing that every day, they came up there and they were taunting me, teasing me. Yes, Lord. Trying to get me to laugh so I fall off. But you know what I did? You stay focused. I stayed. I had my sights on that building, which was a half a block away. And I kept on walking. I didn't pay attention to them. You know why? Because when I stepped up on that girder, I had a new set of ears. And it drowned out all of that junk that they were talking. Oh, I remember back in the day, if you had to say one crossword about my mama, the fight was on. about thorns in the flesh. We are referring to challenges or struggles that we are to live with or endure for a certain period of time. You see, when you become a new creature, when you have a new inner man, like I said, it may not happen overnight, but you continue to stay within and endure all that comes upon you. I'm going through, I'm, I'm, I'm going through a difficult period right now with something that's going on in my life right now that I, I simply did not understand. How could, how could this be happening to me? But the word says, call on me. Call on me. Yes. And, and y'all know me, I ask the tough question. I'll ask God a question. Yes, sir. Oh, you can ask God a question. Yes, He's like, don't no question God, but you can ask him a question. Yes, so I said, Lord, why? Why is this happening? Yes, why is this happening? And, and you know where I went? I went into my place. I went into my computer room and I closed that door. Yes, Lord. And I sat there. So you gotta get in a quiet place. That's yes, why the word tells you, go in your closet. Ain't nobody in that closet but you. But you. Yes, and God told me the same thing that, that he told me before. He said, Emma, because that's what he called me. Yeah. Like he called you God. Right. He calls me Emma. Call everybody in there. He don't call me Emma. Everybody else calls me Emma. But God says Emma. Because that's how you pronounce my name. Emma. Emma. And when I hear Emma, I stop and I listen. He said, I'm going to tell you this one more time, son. This is not personal. This is business. She is about her business. You want to be about my business. And just like before when he told me that, uh -huh. I let her business be her business, uh -huh. and I stayed with his business. Uh -huh. I ain't get what his business is for me, uh -huh. working at this church. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Boy, I done done some other, I, 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 I've been down here four or five days a week. You know what? To keep my mind off of what yes. I'm going to do. So what? So what? So what? So what? If I wasn't invited. Yes. So what? The Lord invited me. Yeah. He invited me. And that's all that is. That's all that happened. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let it go. Let it go. Because, see, that's what the new man does. The new man, the inner man, that new person, that new creature, they let it go. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know why? Jesus came. Yes, sir. Jesus came 
was the second Adam because Jesus was not conceived like a human. That's right. And Adam wasn't conceived like a human. That's right. Neither one of them were conceived like a human. They were both made from the seed of God. a lot of 
of people I said were my best friends. And but then when I got older, I found out I only had one best friend. Mm. That was Jesus. All right. Because see now, my part, if you want to be one of my best friends, you got to pass four from the children. <laughs> Jesus has passed all four. All right. What you talking about, brother? And I'm gonna finish with this. My best friend. And I say you my best friend. By the way, I don't have a lot of best friends, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I got some good friends, some good friends. I love you all in here. But in order to be my best friend, you have to be there for me 24-7. Mm -hmm. When I call on you, no matter what time or day, you'll receive me. And you will not judge me. You will just, if nothing else, listen to what I have that's on my mind and in my heart. That's what Jesus does. He'll receive you 24-7. Let me say right to you. I can count on you not to divulge anything that we have spoken about to anybody. You will carry it to your grave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus carried all of our sins to his grave. Yes, he did. He did. How many people you know, you done told something, and they love you, you love them, and the next day you know somebody else telling you about what they say. What they say. We all been there, haven't we? We all been there. Yes. Three. Yes, sir. I can count on my best friend to sacrifice for me. Make sacrifices for me up to and including putting their own situation in jeopardy. Yes, yes. How many friends you know will take a bullet for you? Huh? Yes. How many friends you know will go to jail for you? Yes. How many friends you know will give you the last penny? How many friends you know? You, 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 you ain't got brothers and sisters like that. Yo, mom and daddy will tell you. <laughs> but that's what Jesus did. He sacrificed. He made the ultimate sacrifice for me. Put his own situation in jeopardy. And here's the interesting thing about that. Jesus didn't have to do it. He could have stopped all of that. He had the power to stop it all. But he was obedient to the Father. And he made that sacrifice for me. And now, Criteria number four, and this is what excludes a lot of people from being my best friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he excludes me. There ain't no funny business. There is no intimacy, physical intimacy between me and my best friend. Mm -hmm. No. 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 Mm -hmm. I laugh when I hear folks say, I married my best friend. Mm -hmm. I say, boy, if they hear the criteria that I have a best friend, they wouldn't be saying it. There is no physical intimacy no. between me and my best friend. That's why my male best friend, I've had three. And my female best friend, I've had two. There was nothing between us. But they, they were my best friends because they met all four criteria. My mama was my best friend because my mama met all four of my criteria. All four of them. I could come to my mom at 4 30 in the morning and say, Mom, guess what? And she said, Come on in. And none of my brothers and sisters ever heard what she told me. Right now, my brothers and sisters are finding out things from me that happened 30 years ago. Mom knew what they did happen because she didn't say nothing. My mother gave me $700 one day. $700 because that's what I needed. And when I looked to see how much she had left in her ledger, it was $2. She gave me $700 on the word. And then, of course, there was no physical intimacy between my mom. Just like with Jesus. We got spiritual intimacy. And that's the kind of intimacy I had with my mother. A spiritual intimacy. I love my mother. Just like I love the Lord. I love the Lord. That's the kind of intimacy the Word talks about. The kind of love that, that Paul had for Timothy. That kind of intimacy is what I'm talking about. Yes. Just like that fear of God, it's not fright, it's reverential, a fear of deep respect. The same type of 
fear I had for my parents, I did not want to disappoint them. And that's why I stayed out of a lot of trouble. And I ain't talking about silly trouble. I'm talking about serious trouble. My mother never did have to come visit us in a prison. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> my mother never had to look down at a casket for one of her sons. You would have thought me growing up, I would have been one like that. But she never had to because she did what the Lord said. She trained us up in the way that we should go. Not the way we wanted to go, but the way we should go. So my brothers and sisters, as you leave out of here, I encourage you to get a new set of eyes. Get a new set of ears. Get a new set of, uh, of legs. Get a new pair of legs. Get a new set of feet. Start walking that straight and narrow. And even though you, go, you might find yourself leaning to the side, just keep the balance and stay focused on the building. And the only way you're going to get to the end is if you're able to see. A blind man probably couldn't walk that girl. But when he got a new set of eyes, he could. Right. Or at least it was there for him to do. When I got a new set of eyes, I started to see things differently. When I got a new set of ears, I started to hear things differently. When I got a new set of legs, I didn't walk into bars anymore. Right. Because my new feet wouldn't let me do it. And my inner man didn't have a desire for it. When you get that inner man, you lose your desire for a lot of things because now you are a new creature, just like that caterpillar or mom or, 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 or what that butterfly. You don't have a taste for leaves. Butterflies look for flowers. Are we here on what you need to know today? Yes. How many of y'all got a word today? Thank you.